So you want an investor. Well, how would you get me to invest in your company? How would you get any investor to put the money from their pockets into your business's pocket to grow your wealth? Well, there is a blueprint that makes investors choose to invest in certain companies. I want to break that down. Let's get into it. Now, there's a number of things you might be thinking right now whilst watching this video. Number one is I don't need an investor. My business is in a great place. Well, here's the thing. When your business becomes investable, it becomes so much more valuable because there's a discipline in business that I strongly believe. You should be building a business to sell even if you have no intention of selling it. And getting it ready for sale is very much similar to getting it ready for investment. And I want to break that down in this video. The second thing you're probably wondering is I need an investor. I want an investor. Well, I'm here to possibly change your mind because I don't think everyone does need an investor. There's some other smart tricks I've got up my sleeve how you can mitigate the need for an investor. And the third thing you're thinking is, well, I 100% want and need an investor, but I'm scared. What does that mean for me? What have I got to do to give up part of my company? Well, for that to be mitigated, you need to be absolutely irresistible to an investor so that you hold more of the cards. I'm going to break all that down too. Point number one. Do you actually need an investor? Do you need someone like me coming in with my money or another big investor, private equity, pension fund, venture capitalist, or a big investment bank? Do you really need these people? In my experience, 80% of the time, the answer is usually no, you don't need them. You just need to get better at income generating tasks. See, lots of entrepreneurs and business owners are building their business and they're in the operator seat. They're managing the day-to-day -day of the business. The super successful ones know how to bring more cash flow into the business. They do this because they're savvy marketeers and they know how to get people to spend their money with their products or service. If you get really good at this, you actually set yourselves up way more attractive for investment anyway. So the first thing that you should ask yourself is, am I good at generating sales for my business? And if I'm not, maybe read 10 books on marketing. Learn how to get customers for your business in the most frugal way possible. I wrote a book called Getting Customers. That's a good place to start because I've learned how to get customers in the most frugal way possible when I was bootstrapped with hardly any money. And I built my business for years and years without borrowing any money or getting any investment into my companies. And I really want you to do the same because that discipline helps you build something that's a commercially profitable enterprise. Hopefully we can now agree that most people don't need investors. They just need to get good at getting cash flow into their business. They need to become marketeers of their business rather than operators of their business. What about the small percentage that could really benefit from an investor? Well, say you're an entrepreneur and you're bootstrapped at the beginning, so you've had to learn how to be very frugal with your cash flow, and you've used your cash, your savings, your friends and family, maybe you've remortgaged your house, and you open a restaurant. And the restaurant is very profitable. It's well received. And you think, I could really scale this up, and I want to do it very quickly. I want to get 20 restaurants open, but I haven't got the cash to do that, and I haven't got the cash to pay for a middle management team that are going to make sure that I don't trip over along the way. And maybe I need some expertise from someone that's been there, done it, and got the metaphorical t-shirt. That's when an investor can really supercharge your business to get you to those 20 restaurants, to give you expertise and hopefully some mentorship. And that's when an investor really can play the big guns to help you grow your business. The second part we need to understand is what makes you irresistible to investors. To understand what makes you irresistible, we need to understand what do they actually love? What do they love investing in? Well, here on the flip chart, I'm going to break it down for you. The first thing is you need to understand the difference between entrepreneur and investor. If you look at what entrepreneur means, it means the seeker of opportunity. We want to make those opportunities profitable. But actually, if you look up the word investor, they're looking for a return on investment. They're looking for profitable opportunities and they want to get their money in and know when they're going to get their money out. That is their operas Mirandi. So we now know their mindset. They're putting their money in. They want to know when they get it out. How are they going to get it out? Well, they're really investing into effective management teams. And notice the word effective here. An effective management team builds a commercially profitable enterprise. They take money and they turn the money into more. And they understand how to do that. They know how they're going to manage the business effectively. Because a investor doesn't want to manage a business day to day. They want the management team to run the business day to day. So the investor has the 
the opportunity for growth. They've got a growth mindset, not an operation mindset. Once you understand those two different things, you can really become irresistible to investors. So you've got to make sure that you build effective management teams. They don't want to buy into a one-man band, a key person-driven business, which lots of entrepreneurial businesses are. That's a big no-no. It scares investors because they think, well, if that key person goes, that key person that's driving the business disappears, what's going to happen to my investment? That's why they love effective management teams. The next point is profit and loss. Understanding the profit and loss, knowing your numbers, and I like to call it this, having commercial awareness. What's the gross profit? What's the margin in your business? Have that documented on paper. This is one of the points that I was making earlier in the video that if you understand this stuff, you've got effective management teams. Even if you're not looking for investment, but you've got all this stuff documented, you're making your business a commercially profitable enterprise that someone would want to buy. And remember this, guys, we're all leaseholders at the end of the day, one day we die. So actually, we want to build a business to sell so that we can enjoy the fruits of our labor. Even if we're passing it on to the next generation, it's a family business. Wouldn't you rather get it into a place that it's effective so that they have got a good chance of taking it on to the next generation? And that's why commercial awareness and knowing your numbers makes you super attractive. This little puppy, moats. What do moats mean? Well, Let's say your business is a castle. This castle represents your business. Now, we need to remember that when we're building a business, the whole of the world and the marketplace is innovating. One of my big rules for business is this. If you don't innovate, you evaporate. Even when you're at the top of your game, things are going really, really well. And then all of a sudden, you're out because you haven't innovated enough. You're relying on establishment to keep you in the game. Now, what you can do is do what smart businesses do. They build moats around their castle. And how do you do that? You become as high a barrier to entry as possible. So building effective teams gives you a moat. Building a brand that people value, like Nike have done with trainers. I mean, that's a commoditized product, but people pay 150 pounds for a trainer that they could buy for 20 pounds. They're not worried about if other people bring out more trainers because they've built a moat around their castle, which is brand value, and people pay for that brand value. Now, intellectual property rights could be another one. Having patents over your product could be another one. What you want to do is build as many moats around your property, your castle, your business as possible to protect you against the marketplace that's always innovating. Investors love that. The thing that makes you irresistible of all is understanding exit value. See, investors are very simple people. They put a pound in or a dollar in, in five years' time, what's that dollar a pound going to turn into? And they think usually in five-year chunks. Putting in a pound, is it going to turn into 10 pounds in five years or 100 pounds or 1,000 pounds? That's very smart. And if you can understand that, you're speaking their language. That's a way of flirting with them, and they're going to want to get into bed with you. So understanding your exit value and when you're going to exit will make you the most irresistible of them all. Understanding your swap, that's your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities and threats. See, investors are thinking about this. Where's their weaknesses? Where's their threats? Where can we take this to the next level? They want to know all this stuff. So it's better you just come out with it from the very beginning. What are the strengths of your businesses? Let's identify your weaknesses because the investor can solve some of those weaknesses or solve some of their threats with their expertise or with their financial input they're going to put into the business. What's the opportunities for the business in the future? If you can identify where you're strong, where you're weak, and actually display that very openly, you become very, very investable. I just want to say a big thank you to American Express for sponsoring this video. Now, I've teamed up with Amex to make some great content to help business owners and entrepreneurs grow their business. Specifically, the one I want to talk about in this video is one I did about marketing. If you want to find out how to get more customers into your business by understanding your most customers and your ideal customers, you're going to love this video. There's a link above my head and also in the video description on how you can watch that video. It goes one step further than that because the guys at Amex have created the business trend and Insights Hub. It's like a resource center for entrepreneurs and business owners to read through loads of articles that will help grow your business. There's also a link in the video description for that too. Let's get back to the video. So you've now become irresistible to an investor and they want to invest. And you've decided that you're going to go on this investment journey. But what do you want from this investor relationship? Well, in my new James Sinclair notebooks, I wrote down some salient points 
And I really want you to really understand this because this could be the difference for taking loads of money, no money, or being in a very complicated, difficult relationship. Because that's what you're doing here. It's like a marriage. You're giving up a slice of your business. You're giving up control of your business. Even if you're not giving a majority of the shares away, you can bet your bottom dollar in that contract there'd be a system that gives the investor control over the business. And there's stories that are adorned with time where investors have taken over a business, even with a minority stake, because that shareholders agreement gives them the power to do it. And that's really the first point that I wanna talk about, a shareholders agreement. When you go into your relationship with your investor, it's very important that you read and understand the small print in that shareholders agreement, because you don't want someone controlling you unnecessarily. I mean, if you're a complete numpty and you muck up the business, then you might be protected by having an investor sell in. But I know some terrible stories where people have lost control of their business and ended up hating their life for many a year. There's a great book called How to Get Rich by Felix Dennis with a whole chapter on this subject, and also a podcast from Business Movers on the story of Cisco. They're the people that invented the internet router, and it really goes in how they built an amazing business, turning millions of pounds. They sold a 30% share of their business, never read the small print on the documentation for their shareholders agreement. And because they only sold 30% of their business, they thought they was in control. But the shareholders agreement allowed the investors to take control of the business and decide how everything was run. Now, I don't want that for you. So you must take decent care and get a good lawyer and someone that's been there and done it to protect you. So we now understand you want to protect yourself and your interests. One of the big things that investors really want is that five-year exit plan. So they're not looking to extract cash out of the business. In fact, if the business is generating positive cash flow, they want to roll that cash into more growth. Now that can be frustrating for you because you might think, well, I could help myself to a dividend. Or you could be well on your way to agreeing that that is the plan to get out of the business in five years' time. So I think it's always best to get yourself a commercial salary when you take an investment on board. So you're paid a salary for your day-to-day -day living, knowing that you're going to get your big payday, which we call a liquidity day in investment terms, five years into the future. Usually investors take no money from their investment during its running days. They might take an administration fee if they're a private equity company, but it's, guess, it's best to get that one out of the way from the very beginning. The next point to really clarify is what makes a good investor. Now, usually people just think about the money they bring to the table. You're so desperate to bring more capital into the business to take it to the next level. You'll do whatever necessary. But actually, lots of great investors do so much more than this. They bring expertise and a black book of contacts, that secret black book of contacts that can open many, many doors for your business. Could be worth way more than the money they bring in. I always think of this little story of Peter Jones. He's a dragon on Dragon's Den here in the United Kingdom. And he invested in a company called Reggae Reggae Source. And Levi was the founder of the business. Now, Peter invested cash into the business, but within a few years, he was in all the top supermarkets chains in the UK and Levi sort of always credits the opportunities that have been opened up by Peter Jones's black book of contacts. So contacts, relationships, building great rapport with your investor, can they mentor you to make you better, should all come before with the money that they bring to the table. I just want to quickly go back to that shareholders agreement. What if you're two years into your relationship with your investor and they haven't done everything they said they would do? Maybe they haven't given you the right mentorship or time or all those opportunities that they said they would bring to the table, or maybe they haven't given the cash that they promised. That's why it's really important to have that shareholders agreement that outlines the terms and conditions of the investment. Or maybe you're just not enjoying the process. Maybe you wanna get out. So it's really important that you protect yourself. If you wanna get out early, how do you get out and set that out at the beginning, not when there's an argument or a war. And that will make a big difference to the success you have. Here's a couple of things I'd like to ask you. If you think I've missed anything out in this video or you've got some experience, please share them in the comments to help the rest of our community. And if there's anything you'd like more clarity on, hit that in the comments too. Make sure you like and subscribe to this video and I'll see you in the next one. Ta-da!